one wants a cloud operating model. Since the introduction of the modern cloud last decade, the entire technology landscape has changed. We've learned a lot from the hyperscalers, especially from AWS. Now, one thing is certain in the technology business, it's so competitive that if a faster, better, cheaper idea comes along, the industry will move quickly to adopt it. They'll add their unique value and then they'll bring solutions to the market. And that's precisely what's happening throughout the technology industry because of cloud. And one of the best examples is Amazon's Nitro. That's AWS's custom built hypervisor that delivers on the promise of more efficiently using resources and expanding things like processor optionality for customers. It's a secret weapon for Amazon. As we, as we wrote last year, every infrastructure company needs something like Nitro to compete. Why do we say this? Well, Wikibon, our research arm, estimates that nearly 30% of CPU cores in the data center are wasted. They're doing work that they weren't designed to do well, specifically offloading networking, storage, and security tasks. So if you can eliminate that waste, you can recapture dollars that drop right to the bottom line. That's why every company needs a Nitro-like solution. As a result of these developments, customers are rethinking networks and how they utilize precious compute resources. They can't or won't put everything into the public cloud for many reasons. That's one of the tailwinds for tier two cloud service providers and why they're growing so fast. They give options to customers that don't want to keep investing in building out their own data centers and they don't want to migrate all their workloads to the public cloud. So these providers and on-prem customers they want to be more like hyperscalers, right? They want to be more agile and they, they, to do that, they're distributing networking and security functions and pushing them closer to the applications. Now at the same time, they're unifying their view of the network so it can be less fragmented, managed more efficiently with more automation and better visibility. How are they doing this? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to changing the game for cloud networking made possible by Pluribus Networks. My name is Dave Vellante and today on this special CUBE presentation, John Furrier and I are going to explore these issues in detail. We'll dig into new solutions being created by Pluribus and NVIDIA to specifically address offloading wasted resources, accelerating performance, isolating data and making networks more secure, all while unifying the network experience. We're going to start on the West Coast in our Palo Alto studios where John will talk to Mike Capuano of Pluribus and Ami Badani of NVIDIA. Then we'll bring on Alessandro Barbieri of Pluribus and Pete Lumbus from NVIDIA to take a deeper dive into the technology. And then we're going to bring it back here to our East Coast studio and get the independent analyst perspective from Bob La Liberté of the Enterprise Strategy Group. We hope you enjoy the program. Okay, let's do this. Over to John in Palo Alto. Okay, let's kick things off. We're here at Mike Capiano, CMO of Pluribus Networks, and Ami Badani, VP of Networking, Marketing, and Developer Ecosystem at NVIDIA. Great to have you. Welcome, folks. Thank you. Thanks. So let's get into the, the problem situation with Cloud Unified Network. What problems are out there? What challenges do cloud operators have, Mike? Let's get into it. Yeah, really, you know, the challenges that we're looking at are for non-hyperscalers. That's enterprises, governments, um, tier two service providers, cloud service providers. And the first mandate for them is to become as agile as a hyperscaler. So they need to be able to deploy services and security policies in seconds. They need to be able to abstract the complexity of the network and define things in software while it's accelerated in hardware. Um, really, ultimately, they need a single operating model everywhere. And then the second thing is they need to distribute networking and security services out to the edge of the host. Um, we're seeing a growth in cyber attacks. Um, it's, it's not slowing down, it's only getting worse. And you know, solving for this security problem across clouds is absolutely critical. And the way to do it is to move security out to the host. Okay, with that goal in mind, what's the Pluribus vision? How does this tie together? Yeah, so um, basically what we see is uh, that this demands a new architecture. And that new architecture has four tenants. The first tenant is unified and simplified cloud networks. If you look at cloud networks today, there's, there's sort of like discrete bespoke cloud networks, you know, per hypervisor, per private cloud, 
edge cloud, public cloud, each of the public clouds have different networks. That needs to be unified. You know, if we want these folks to be able to be agile, they need to be able to issue a single command or instantiate a security policy across all of those locations with one command and not have to go to each one. The second is, like I mentioned, distributed security. Um, distributed security without compromise extended out to the host is absolutely critical. So micro segmentation and distributed firewalls. But it doesn't stop there. They also need pervasive visibility. You know, it's, 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 it's sort of like with security, you really can't see, you can't protect what you can't see. So you need visibility everywhere. The problem is visibility to date has been very expensive. Folks have had to basically build a separate overlay network of taps, packet brokers, tap aggregation infrastructure. That really needs to be built into this unified network I'm talking about. And the last thing is automation. All of this needs to be SDN enabled. So this is related to my comment about abstraction. Abstract the complexity of all of these discrete networks, whatever is down there in the physical layer, yeah. I don't want to see it. I want to abstract it. I want to define things in software, but I do want to leverage the power of hardware to accelerate that. So that's the fourth tenant is SDN automation. Mike, we've been talking on theCUBE a lot about this architectural shift and customers are looking at this. This is a big part of everyone who's looking at cloud operations next gen. How do we get there? How do customers get this vision realized? That's a great question and I uh, appreciate the tee up. I mean, we're, we're here today for that reason. We're introducing two things today. Um, the first is a unified cloud networking vision. And that is a vision of where Pluribus is headed with our partners like NVIDIA long-term. Um, and that is about uh, deploying a common operating model, SDN enabled, SDN automated, hardware accelerated across all clouds. Um, and whether that's underlay and overlay, switch or server, um, hype, any hypervisor infrastructure, containers, any workload, doesn't matter. So that's ultimately where we want to get, and that's what we talked about earlier. Um, the first step in that uh, vision is what we call the unified cloud fabric. And this is the next generation of our adaptive cloud fabric. Um, and what's nice about this is we're not starting from scratch. We have a, a, an award-winning adaptive cloud fa fabric product that is deployed globally. Um, and in, in particular, uh, we're very proud of the fact that it's deployed in over 100 tier one mobile operators as the network fabric for their 4G and 5G virtualized cores. We know how to build carrier grade uh, networking infrastructure. What we're doing now um, to realize this next generation unified cloud fabric is we're extending from the switch to this NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPU. We know there's- Hold, a, hold that up real quick, that's a, good, that's a good prop. That's the Bluefield NVIDIA card? It's the NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPU, data processing unit. And um, uh, you know, what we're doing uh, fundamentally is extending our SDN automated fabric, the unified cloud fabric, out to the host but it does take processing power. So we knew that we didn't want to do, we didn't want to implement that running on the CPUs, which is what some other companies do, because it consumes revenue generating CPUs from the application. So a DPU is a perfect way to implement this, and we knew that NVIDIA was the leader with this blue field too. And so that is the first, that's, that's the first step into getting, into realizing this vision. I mean, NVIDIA has always been powering some great workloads of GPUs, now you got DPUs, networking, and NVIDIA is here. What is the relationship with Pluribus? How did that come together? How, tell us the story. Yeah, so you know, we've been working with Pluribus for quite some time. I think the last several months was really when it came to fruition. And uh, what Pluribus is trying to build and what NVIDIA has, so we have you know, this concept of a Bluefield data processing unit, which if you think about it, conceptually it does really three things offload, accelerate, and isolate. So offload your workloads from your CPU to your data processing unit, infrastructure workloads that is. Uh, accelerate, so there's a bunch of acceleration engines. So you can run infrastructure workloads much faster than you would otherwise. 
and then isolation. So you have this nice security isolation between the data processing unit and your other uh, CPU environment. And so you can run completely isolated workloads directly on the data processing unit. So we introduced this, you know, a couple years ago. And with Pluribus, you know, we've been talking to the Pluribus team for quite some months now. And I think really the combination of what Pluribus is trying to build and what they've developed around this unified cloud fabric uh, is fits really nicely with the DPU and running that on the DPU and extending it really from your physical switch all the way to your host environment, specifically on the data processing unit. So if you think about what's happening, as you add data processing units to your environment, so every server we believe over time is gonna have data processing units. So now you'll have to manage that complexity from the physical network layer to the host layer. And so what Pluribus is really trying to do is extending the network fabric from the host, from the switch to the host and really have that single pane of glass for network operators to be able to configure, provision, manage all of the complexity of the network environment. So that's really how the partnership truly started. And so it started really with extending the network fabric. And now we're also working with them on security. So, you know, if you sort of take that concept of isolation and security isolation, what Pluribus has within their fabric is the concept of micro-segmentation. And so now you can take that, extend it to the data processing unit and really have um, isolated micro-segmentation workloads, whether it's bare metal, cloud native environments, whether it's virtualized environments, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud. So it really is a magical partnership between the two companies uh, with their unified cloud fabric running on, on the DPU. You know what I love about this conversation is it reminds me of when you have these changing markets. The product gets pulled out of the market and, and you guys step up and create these new solutions. And I think this is a great example. So I have to ask you, how do you guys differentiate? What sets this apart for customers? What's, what's in it for the customer? Yeah, so I mentioned you know three things it's in terms of the value of what the Bluefield brings, right? There's offloading, accelerating, and isolating. That's sort of the key core tenets of Bluefield. Um, so that, you know, if you sort of think about what, um, what Bluefield, what we've done, you know, in terms of the differentiation, we're really a robust platform for innovation. So we introduced Bluefield 2 uh, last year. We're introducing Bluefield 3, which is our next generation of Bluefield. You know, it will have 5X the ARM compute capacity. It will have 400 gig line rate acceleration, 4X better crypto acceleration. So it will be remarkably better than the previous generation. And we'll continue to innovate and add, uh, you know, chips to our portfolio every, every 18 months to two years. Um, so that's sort of one of the, the key areas of differentiation. The other is that if you look at NVIDIA and, and you know, what we're sort of known for is we're really known for our AI, our artificial intelligence and our artificial intelligence software as well as our GPU. So you look at artificial intelligence and the combination of artificial intelligence plus data processing, this really creates the you know, faster, more efficient, secure AI systems from you know, the core of your data center all the way out to the edge. And so with NVIDIA, we really have these converged accelerators where we've combined the GPU, which does all your AI processing with your um, data processing with the DPU. So we have this convergence, really nice convergence of, of that area. And I would say the third area is really around our developer environment. So you know, one of the key one of our key motivations at NVIDIA is really to have our partner ecosystem embrace our technology and build solutions around our technology. So if you look at what we've done with the DPU, we've created an SDK, which is an open SDK called DOCA. And it's an open SDK for our partners to really build and develop solutions using Bluefield and using all these accelerated libraries that we expose through DOCA. And so part of our differentiation is really building this open ecosystem for our partners to take advantage and build solutions around our technology. You know, what's exciting is when I hear you talk, it's like you, you, you realize that there's no one general purpose network anymore. Everyone has their right. own super environment, super cloud, or these new uh, capabilities they can really craft their own, I'd say custom environment at scale with easy tools. Right. And it's all kind of, again, this is the new architecture, Mike, you were talking about. How does customers run this effectively, cost effectively, and how do people migrate? Yeah, I, I think that is the key question, right? So we've got this beautiful architecture. You, you, you know, Amazon Nitro is a, is a good example of, of a smart NIC architecture that has been successfully deployed, but 
enterprises and service, tier two service providers and tier one service providers and governments are not Amazon, right? So they need to migrate there and they need this architecture to be cost effective. And, and that's, that's super key. I mean, the reality is DPUs are moving fast, but they're not going to be um, deployed everywhere on day one. Some servers will ha have DPUs right away. Some servers will have DPUs in a year or two. And then there are devices that may never have DPUs, right? IoT gateways or legacy servers, even mainframes. Um, so that's the beauty of a solution that creates a fabric across both the switch and the DPU, right? Um, and by leveraging the NVIDIA Bluefield DPU, what we really like about it is it's open um, and that drives uh, cost efficiencies. And then, um, uh, you know, with this, with this our architectural approach, effectively you get a unified solution across switch and DPU workload independent, doesn't matter what hypervisor it is, integrated visibility, integrated security, and that can uh, create tremendous cost efficiencies and, and, and really extract a lot of the expense from a, from a capital perspective out of the network, as well as from an operational perspective, because now I have an SDN automated solution where I'm literally issuing a command to deploy a network service or to create or deploy a security policy and is deployed everywhere automatically, saving the, oper the network operations team and the security operations team time. All right, so let me, let me rewind that because that's super important. We've got the unified cloud architecture. I'm the customer, it out. it's implemented. What's the value again? Take, take me through the value to me. I, I have a unified environment. What's the value? Yeah, so the, I mean, the, the value is effectively, um, <clears throat> You, the, so there's a few pieces of value. The first piece of value is um, I'm creating this clean DMARC. I'm taking networking to the host, and like I mentioned, we're not running it on the CPU. So in implementations that run networking on the CPU, there's some conflict between the DevOps team who own the server and the NetOps team who own the network because they're installing software on the, on the CPU, stealing cycles from what should be revenue generating uh, CPUs. So now by, by terminating the networking on the DPU, we cl create this real clean DMARC. So the DevOps folks are happy because they don't necessarily have the skills to manage network and they don't necessarily want to spend the time managing networking. They've got their network counterparts who are also happy, the NetOps team, because they want to control the networking. And now we've got this clean DMARC where the DevOps folks get the services they need and the NetOps folks get the control and agility they need. So that's a huge value. Um, the next piece of value is distributed security. This is essential, I mentioned it earlier. You know, put, pushing out micro-segmentation and distributed firewall basically at the application level, right, where I create these small, small segments on an application by application basis. So if a bad actor does penetrate the perimeter firewall, they're contained once they get inside. Because the worst thing is a bad actor penetrates a perimeter f f firewall and can go wherever they want and wreak havoc, right? And so that's why this, this is so essential. Um, and the next benefit obviously is this unified networking operating model, right? Having uh, 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 an operating model across switch and server, underlay and overlay, workload agnostic, making the life of the NetOps teams much easier so they can focus their time on yeah. really strategy instead of spending an afternoon deploying a single VLAN, for example. Awesome, and I think also from my standpoint, I mean, perimeter security is pretty much, I mean, they're out there, I guess the firewall still out there exists, but pretty much they're being breached all the time, the perimeter. So you have to have this new security model. And I think the other thing that you mentioned, the separation between DevOps is cool because the infrastructure as code is about making the developers be agile and build security in from day one. So this policy aspect is, is huge. Um, new control points. I think you guys have a new architecture that enables the security to be handled more flexible. Right, That right. seems to be the killer feature here. Right, yeah, if you look at the data processing unit, I think one of the, the great things about sort of this new architecture, it's really the foundation for zero trust. It's, so like you talked about, the perimeter is getting breached. And so now each and every compute node has to be protected. And I think that's sort of what you see with the partnership between Pluribus and NVIDIA is the DPU is really the foundation of zero trust. 
And Pluribus is really building on that vision with uh, allowing sort of micro segmentation and being able to protect each and every compute node as well as uh, the underlying network. This is super exciting. This is an illustration of how the market's evolving. Architectures are being reshaped and refactored for cloud scale and all this new goodness with data. So I got to ask how you guys go into market together. Mike, we'll start with you. What's the relationship look like in the go-to-market with NVIDIA? Sure, um, I mean, we're, you know, we're super excited about the partnership. Obviously, we're here together. Um, we think we've got a really good solution for the market, so we're jointly marketing it. Um, uh, you know, obviously, we appreciate that NVIDIA is open. Um, that's, that's sort of in our DNA. We're about open networking. They've got other ISVs who are going to run on Bluefield too. We're probably going to run on other DPUs in the, in the future. But right now, um, we're, we feel like we're partnered with the number one uh, provider of DPUs in, in the world and uh, super excited about uh, making a splash with it. Oh man, Vidi, get the hot product. Yeah, so Bluefield 2, as I mentioned, was GA last year. We're introducing, uh, well, we now also have the converged accelerator. So I talked about artificial intelligence, our artificial intelligence software with the uh, Bluefield DPU all of that put together on a converged accelerator. The nice thing there is you can either run those workloads. So if you have an artificial intelligence workload and an infrastructure workload, you can run them separately on the same uh, platform, or you can actually use, uh, you can actually run artificial intelligence applications on the blue field itself. So that's what the converged accelerator really brings to the table. Uh, so that's available now. Then we have Bluefield 3, which will be available late this year. And I talked about sort of, you know, uh, how much better that next generation of Bluefield is in comparison to Bluefield 2. So we'll see Bluefield 3 shipping later on this year. And then our software stack, which I talked about, which is called Doka. We're on our second version, our Doka 1.2. We're releasing Doka 1.3 uh, in about uh, two months from now. And so that's really our open ecosystem framework to allow you to program the Bluefield. So we have all of our acceleration libraries, um, security libraries, that's all packed into this SDK called Doka. And it really gives that simplicity to our partners to be able to develop on top of Bluefield. So as we add new generations of Bluefield, you know, next next year we'll have, you know, another version yeah. and so on and so forth. Doka is really that unif unified layer that allows um, Bluefield to be both forwards compatible and backwards compatible. So partners only really have to think about writing to that SDK once, and then it automatically works with future generations of Bluefield. So that's sort of the nice thing around um, around Doka. And then in terms of our go-to-market model, we're working with every, every major OEM. So uh, later on this year, you'll see you know, major server manufacturers uh, releasing Bluefield-enabled servers. So uh, more to awesome. come. Awesome. Save money, make it easier, more capabilities, more workload power. Right. This is the future of of cloud operations. Yeah, awesome. and, and uh, one thing I'll add is um, we are, um, we have a number of customers as you'll hear in the next segment um, that are already signed up and will be working with us for our uh, early field trial starting late April, early May. Um, we are accepting registrations. You can go to www.pluribusnetworks.com slash EFT. Uh, if you're interested in signing up for um, uh, being part of our field trial and, and providing feedback on uh, the product. Awesome, innovation and networking. Thanks so much for sharing the news. Really appreciate it, thanks so much. Okay, in a moment, we'll be back to look deeper in the product, the integration, security, zero trust use cases. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage. Cloud networking is complex and fragmented, slowing down your business. How can you simplify and unify your cloud networks to increase agility and business velocity? Pluribus Unified Cloud Networking provides a unified, simplified, and agile network fabric across all clouds. It brings the simplicity of a public cloud operation model to private clouds, dramatically reducing complexity and improving agility, availability, and security. Now, enterprises and service providers can increase their business velocity and delight customers in the distributed multi-cloud era. We achieve this with a new approach to cloud networking, Pluribus Unified Cloud Fabric. This open, vendor-independent network fabric unifies networking and security across distributed clouds. The first step is extending the fabric to servers equipped with data processing units, unifying the fabric across switches and servers. And it doesn't stop there. 
the fabric is unified across underlay and overlay networks and across all workloads and virtualization environments, the unified cloud fabric is optimized for seamless migration to this new distributed architecture. Leveraging the power of the DPU for application level micro segmentation, distributed firewall and encryption, while still supporting those servers and devices that are not equipped with a DPU. Ultimately, the unified cloud fabric extends seamlessly across distributed clouds, including central, regional, and edge private clouds and public clouds. The unified cloud fabric is a comprehensive network solution that includes everything you need for cloud networking, built-in SDN automation, distributed security without compromises, pervasive wire speed visibility and application insight, available on your choice of open networking switches and DPUs, all at the lowest total cost of ownership. The end result is a dramatically simplified unified cloud networking architecture that unifies your distributed clouds and frees your business to move at cloud speed. To learn more, visit www.pluribusnetworks.com. Okay, we're back. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE and we're going to go deeper into a deep dive into unified cloud networking solution from Pluribus and NVIDIA. And we'll examine some of the use cases with Alessandro Barberi, VP of Product Management at Pluribus Networks, and Pete Lumbis, who's Director of Technical Marketing at NVIDIA Remotely. Guys, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Here. So deep dive, let's get into the what and how. Alexandra, we heard earlier about the Pluribus NVIDIA partnership and the solution you're working together on. What is it? Yeah, first let's talk about the what. What are we really integrating with uh, the NVIDIA Bluefield uh, DPU technology? Uh, Pluribus has, um, uh, has been shipping uh, in, uh, in volume uh, in multiple mission critical uh, networks, this Advisor One network operating systems. It runs today on uh, merchant silicon switches and effectively it's a standard based open network operating system for data center. Um, and the novelty about this operating system is that it integrates a distributed control plane uh, for uh, to automate effectively an SDN uh, overlay. This uh, automation is uh, completely uh, open and interoperable and extensible to other uh, type of clouds. It's not enclosed. And this is actually what we're now porting to the NVIDIA DPU. Awesome, so how does it integrate uh, into NVIDIA hardware? And specifically, uh, how is Pluribus integrating its software with the NVIDIA hardware? Yeah, I think uh, uh, we leverage some of the interesting properties of the Bluefield uh, DPU hardware, which allows actually to integrate uh, um, uh, our software, our network operating system in a manner which is completely isolated and independent uh, from the guest operating system. So the first byproduct of this approach is that uh, whatever we do at the network level on the, the DPU card uh, is completely agnostic to the hypervisor layer or OS layer running on, uh, on the host. Even more, um, uh, we can also independently manage this network node, this switch on a NIC effectively, um, uh, managed completely independently from the host. You don't have to go through the network operating system running on x86 uh, to control this network node. So you truly have the experience effectively of a, a top of rack for virtual machine or a top of rack for uh, uh, Kubernetes pods, where instead of uh, um, if you allow me with the analogy, instead of connecting a, a server NIC directly to uh, a switch port, now you're connecting a VM virtual interface to a virtual interface on the switch on a NIC. And uh, also as part of this integration, we uh, put a lot of effort, a lot of emphasis in uh, accelerating the entire uh, data plane for networking and security. So we are taking advantage of uh, the Doka, uh, NVIDIA Doka API to program the accelerators. And this, you, you accomplish two things with that. Number one, uh, you uh, have much greater performance, much better performance than running the same network services on an x86 CPU. And second, uh, this gives you the ability to free up, I would say around 20, 25% of the server capacity to be devoted either to uh, additional workloads uh, to run your uh, cloud applications, or perhaps you can actually shrink the power footprint and, co and compute footprint of your data center by 20% if you want to run the same number of compute workloads. So great efficiencies in the overall approach. And this is completely independent of the server CPU, right? 
Absolutely, there is zero code from Pluribus uh, running on the x86, and this is what why we think this enables a very clean demarcation between compute and network. So, Pete, I got to get I got to get you in here. We heard that uh, the DPUs enable cleaner separation of DevOps and NetOps. Can you explain why that's important? Because you know, everyone's talking DevSecOps, right? Now you got NetOps, Net NetSecOps. This separation, why is this clean separation important? Yeah, I think it's uh, you know it's a pragmatic solution in my opinion. Um, you know, we wish the the world was all kind of rainbows and unicorns, but it's a little a little messier than that. And I think a lot of the DevOps stuff and that uh, mentality and philosophy, there's a natural fit there, right? You have applications running on servers, so you're talking about developers with those applications integrating with the operators of those servers. Well, the network has always been this other thing. And the network operators have always had a very different approach to things than compute operators. And, you know, I think that we, we in the networking industry have gotten closer together, but there's still a gap. There's still some distance. And I, I think in, that distance isn't going to be closed. And so, you know, again, it, it comes down to pragmatism. And, and I think, you know, one of my favorite phrases is look, good fences make good neighbors. And that's what this is. Yeah, and it's a great point because DevOps has become kind of the, the calling card for cloud, right? But <laughs> DevOps is a simply infrastructure as code and infrastructure is networking, right? So if infrastructure is code, you know, you're talking about, you know, that part of the stack under the covers, under the hood, if you will, this is super important distinction. And, and this is where the innovation is. Can you elaborate on how you see that? Because this is really where the action is right now. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I think that's where um, one from, from the policy, the security, the, the zero trust aspect of this, right? If you get it wrong on that network side, all of a sudden you you can totally open up that those capabilities. And so security is part of that. But the other part is thinking about this at scale, right? So we're taking one top of rack switch and adding you know up to 48 servers per rack. And so that ability to automate, orchestrate and manage at scale becomes absolutely critical. Alessandro, this is really the why we're talking about here. And this is scale. And again, getting it right. If you don't get it right, you're going to be really kind of up, you know what, you know? So this is a huge deal. Networking matters, security matters, automation matters, DevOps, NetOps, all coming together, clean separation. Um, help us understand how this joint solution with NVIDIA fits into the Pluribus Unified Cloud Networking vision, because this is what people are talking about and working on right now. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think here with this solution, we're attacking two major problems in cloud networking. One is uh, operation of uh, cloud networking, and the second is uh, distributing security services in the cloud infrastructure. First, let me talk about, first, what are we really unifying? If we're unifying something, something must be at least fragmented or disjointed. And what is disjointed is actually the network in the cloud. If you look holistically how networking is deployed in the cloud, you have your physical fabric infrastructure, right? Your switches and routers. Uh, you build your IP clause fabric, leaf and spine topologies. This is actually a well understood uh, problem, I, I would say. Um, there are multiple vendors uh, with, uh, um, uh, so let's say, similar technologies. Uh, um, very well standardized, uh, very well understood, uh, um, and almost a commodity, I would say, building an IP fabric these days. But this is not the place where you deploy most of your services in the cloud, particularly from a security standpoint. Those services are actually now moved into the uh, compute layer, where you actually, where cloud builders uh, have to instrument the, uh, a separate uh, network virtualization layer where they deploy segmentation and security closer to the workloads. And this is where the complication arise. This high value part of the cloud network is where you have a plethora of options that they don't talk to each other and they're very dependent on the kind of hypervisor or compute solution you choose. Um, for example, the networking API to, between an ESXi environment or an Hyper-V or a, a Zen are completely disjointed. You have multiple orchestration layers and, when, and then when you throw in also uh, Kubernetes in this, in this, in this type of architecture, uh, you're introducing yet another uh, level of networking. And uh, when Kubernetes runs on top of VMs, which is a, a prevalent approach, you actually are stacking uh, uh, multiple networks on the compute layer that they eventually run on the physical fabric infrastructure. Those are all ships in the nights, uh, effectively, <laughs> right? Yeah. They operate as completely disjointed and we're trying to attack uh, this problem uh, first with the notion of a unified fabric which is independent from any workloads. 
uh, whether it's the, this fabric spans on a switch, which can be con connected to uh, a bare metal workload, or can span all the way inside the DPU, uh, where um, you have uh, your multi-hypervisor compute environment. It's one API, one common network control plane, and one common set of segmentation services for the network. That's problem number one. You know, it's interesting, you, you, I hear you talking, I hear one network, one, different operating models. Reminds me of the old serverless days, you know? There's still servers, but they call it serverless. Is there going to be a term networkless? Because at the end of the day, it should be one network, not multiple operating models. This, this is a, a problem that you guys are working on. Is that right? I mean, I'm not, I'm just joking, serverless and networkless. But the idea is, it should be one thing. Yeah, it's effectively what we're trying to do is we're trying to recompose this fragmentation uh, in terms of network operation across physical networking and server networking. Server networking is where the majority of the problems uh, are because of the, uh, as much as you have standardized the ways of building uh, physical networks and cloud fabrics with IP protocols and internet, you don't have that kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, operational efficiency uh, at the server layer. And uh, this is what we're trying to attack first uh, with this technology. The second aspect we're trying to attack is uh, how we distribute the security services throughout the infrastructure more efficiently, whether it's micro-segmentation, is uh, stateful uh, firewall services, or even encryption. Those are all capabilities enabled by the Bluefield uh, uh, DPU technology. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we can actually integrate those capabilities directly into the network fabric, uh, limiting dramatically, at least for east-west traffic, the sprawl of uh, security appliances, whether virtual or physical, that is typically the way people today uh, segment and secure the, the traffic in the cloud. Awesome. Pete, all kidding aside about networkless and serverless, kind of fun, kind of fun play on words there. The network is one thing, it's basically distributed computing, right? So I'd love to get your thoughts about this distributed security with zero trust as the driver for this architecture you guys are doing. Can you share in more detail the depth of why DPU-based approach is better than alternatives? Yeah, I think what's what's beautiful and kind of what the DPU brings that's new to this model is a completely isolated compute environment inside. So, you know, it's the, uh, yo dog, I heard you like a server, so I put a server inside your server. Uh, and so we provide, a, you know, ARM CPUs, memory, and network accelerators inside. And that is completely isolated from the host. So the server, the, the actual x86 host, just thinks it has a regular NIC in there, but you actually have this full control plane thing. It's just like taking your top of rack switch and shoving it inside of your compute node. And so you have not only the separation um, within the data plane, but you have this complete control plane separation. So you have this element that the network team can now control and manage, but we're taking all of the functions we used to do at the top of rack switch and we're distributing them now. And it, you know, as time has gone on, we've we've struggled to put more and more and more into that network edge. And the reality is the network edge is the compute layer, not the top of rack switch layer. And so that provides this phenomenal enforcement point for security and policy. And I think outside of today's solutions around virtual firewalls, um, the other option is centralized appliances. And even if you can get one that can scale large enough the question is, can you afford it? And so what we end up doing is we kind of hope that a VLAN is good enough, or we hope that a VXLAN tunnel is good enough. And we can actually apply more advanced techniques there because we can't physically, you know, financially afford that appliance to see all of the traffic. And now that we have a distributed model with this accelerator, we could do it. So what's, the, what's in it for the customer, real quick, because I think this is an interesting point. You mentioned policy. Everyone in networking knows policy is just a great thing and it, it adds, you hear it being talked about up the stack as well when you start getting into orchestrating microservices and whatnot, all that good stuff going on there, containers and whatnot and modern applications. What's the benefit to the customers with this approach? Because what I heard was more scale, more edge, deployment flexibility relative to security policies and application enablement. I mean, is that, what, what's the customer get out of this architecture? What's the enablement? It, it, it comes down to uh, taking again, the capabilities that were in that top of rack switch and distributing them down. So that makes simplicity, smaller blast radiuses for failure, smaller failure domains, maintenance on the networks and the systems become easier. Your ability to integrate across workloads becomes infinitely easier. Um, and again, you know, 
we always want to kind of separate each one of those layers. So just as in, say, a, a VXLAN network, my leaf and spine don't have to be tightly coupled together, I can now do this at a different layer. And so you can run a DPU with any networking in the core there. And so you get this extreme flexibility. You can start small. You can scale large. Um, you know, it, to me, the, the possibilities are endless. It's a great security control plane. Really, flexibility is key. And, and also being situationally aware of any kind of threats or new vectors or whatever's happening in the network. Alessandro, this is huge um, upside, right? You've already identified some uh, successes with some customers on your early field trials. What are they doing and why are they attracted to the solution? Yeah, I think the response from customer has been uh, the most uh, uh, encouraging and uh, exciting uh, for uh, for us to uh, to sort of continue and work and develop this product. And we have actually learned a lot in the process. Um, we talked to tier two, tier three cloud providers. Uh, we talked to uh, SP, um, sort of telco type of networks, uh, uh, as well as uh, inter large enterprise customers. Um, in uh, one particular case, um, uh, one uh, I think um, let me let me call out a, a couple of examples here just to give you a flavor. Uh, there is a service provider, uh, a cloud provider uh, in Asia who is actually managing a cloud uh, where they are offering services based on multiple hypervisors. They are native services based on Zen, but they also uh, on ramp into the cloud uh, workloads based on uh, ESXi and uh, and KVM, depending on what the customer uh, picks from the uh, picks from the menu. And they have the problem of now orchestrating uh, through their orchestrator, integrating with Zen Center, with vSphere, uh, with uh, OpenStack to coordinate uh, these multiple environments. And in the process uh, to provide security, they actually deploy virtual appliances everywhere, which has a lot of cost, complication, and it's up into the server CPU. The promise that they saw in this technology, they call it actually game changing, is actually to remove all this complexity in a single network and distribute the micro segmentation service directly uh, into the fabric. And overall, they're hoping to get out of it uh, tremendous uh, um, OPEX uh, benefit and overall um, uh, operational simplification for their cloud infrastructure. That's one potent uh, use case. Uh, another uh, large enterprise customer, global enterprise customer, uh, is running uh, both uh, ESXi and Hyper-V in their environment, uh, and they don't have a solution to do micro-segmentation consistently across hypervisors. So again, micro-segmentation is a huge driver. Security looks like uh, it, it's a recurring theme uh, talking to most of these customers. And in the telco space, um, uh, we're working with uh, a few telco customers on this EFT program, uh, uh, where the main goal is actually to harmonize network operation. They typically handle all the VNFs uh, with uh, their own homegrown DPDK stack. Uh, this is overly complex. It is frankly also slow and inefficient. And then they have a physical network to manage. The, the idea of having, again, one network uh, uh, to coordinate the provisioning of cloud services between the, the telco VNFs uh, uh, and uh, the rest of the infrastructure uh, is extremely powerful on top of the offloading capability offered by the Bluefield DPUs. Those are just some examples. That was a great use case, a lot more potential. I see that with the unified cloud networking, great stuff. Pete, shout out to you guys at NVIDIA, you've been following uh, your success for a long time and continuing to innovate as cloud scales and Pluribus here with the unified networking, kind of bring it to the next level. Great stuff, great to have you guys on. And again, software keeps uh, driving this, the, the innovation. And again, networking is just a part of it and it's the key solution. So I got to ask both of you to, to, to wrap this up. How can cloud operators who are interested in, in this uh, new architecture and solution uh, learn more? Because this is uh, an architectural shift. People are working on this problem. They're trying to think about multiple clouds. They're trying to think about unification around the network and giving more security, more flexibility uh, to their teams. How can people learn more? Yeah, so uh, Alessandro and I have a, a talk at the upcoming NVIDIA GTC conference. Um, so it's the week of March 21st through 24th. Um, you can go and register for free, nvidia.com slash GTC. Um, you can also watch recorded sessions if you end up watching this on YouTube a little bit after the fact. Um, and we're going to dive a little bit more into the specifics and the details and, and what we're providing in the solution. Awesome, Alessandro, how can we, people learn more? 
Yeah, absolutely. People can go to the Pluribus website, www.pluribusnetworks.com slash EFT, and they can fill up the form and uh, they will contact Pluribus to either know more or to know more and actually to sign up for the actual early field trial program, which starts at the end of April. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Thanks you both for joining, appreciate it. Up next, you're going to hear an independent analyst perspective and review some of the research from the Enterprise Strategy Group, ESG. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching. folks at Pluribus Networks and NVIDIA about their effort to transform cloud networking and unify bespoke infrastructure. Now let's get the perspective from an independent analyst. And to do so, we welcome in ESG senior analyst, Bob La Liberté. Bob, good to see you. Thanks for coming into our East Coast studios. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, so this, this idea of unified cloud networking approach, how serious is it? What's, what's driving it? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of drivers behind it, but probably the first and foremost is the fact that application environments are becoming a lot more distributed, right? So the IT pendulum tends to swing back and forth, and we're definitely on one that's swinging from consolidated to distributed. And so applications are being deployed in multiple private data centers, multiple public cloud locations, edge locations. And as a result of that, what you're seeing is a lot of complexity. So organizations are having to deal with this highly disparate environment. They have to secure it, they have to ensure connectivity to it, and all that's driving up complexity. In fact, when we asked in one of our last surveys in, in last year about network complexity, more than half, 54% came out and said, hey, our network environment is now either more or significantly more complex than it used to be. And as a result of that, what you're seeing is it's really impacting agility. So everyone's moving to these modern application environments, distributing them across areas so they can improve agility, yet it's creating more complexity. So a little bit counter to the fact and you know, really counter to their overarching digital transformation initiatives. From what we've seen, you know, about nine out of 10 organizations today are either beginning in process or have a mature digital transformation process or initiative but their top goals, when you look at them, it probably shouldn't be a surprise. The number one goal is driving operational efficiency. So it makes sense. I've distributed my environment to create agility, but I've created a lot of complexity. So now I need these tools that are going to help me drive operational efficiency, drive better experiences. Got it. I mean, I love how you bring in the data. ESG does a great job with that. The question is, is it, is it about just unifying existing networks or is there sort of a need to rethink, kind of a do-over, net, how networks are built? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point because certainly unifying networks helps, mm -hmm. right? Driving any kind of operational efficiency helps. But in this particular case, because we've made the transition to new application architectures and the impact that's having as well, it's really about changing and bringing in new frameworks and new network architectures to accommodate those new application architectures. And, and by that, what I'm talking about is the fact that these new modern application architectures, microservices, containers, are driving a lot more east-west traffic. 
So in the old days, it used to be easier north-south coming out of the server, one application per server, things like that. Right now, you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of microservices communicating with each other, users communicating to them. So there's a lot more traffic, and a lot of it's taking place within the servers themselves. The other issue that you're starting to see as well, from that security perspective, when we were all consolidated, we had those perimeter-based legacy, you know, castle and moat security architectures, but that doesn't work anymore when the applications aren't in the castle, right? When everything's spread out, that, that no longer happens. So we're absolutely seeing um, organizations trying to, trying to make a shift. And, and I think much like if you think about the shift that we're seeing with all the remote workers and the SASE framework to enable a secure framework there, this, it's almost the same thing. We're seeing this distributed services framework come up to support the applications better within the data centers, within the cloud data centers, so that you can drive that security closer to those applications and make sure they're, they're fully protected. Uh, and that's really driving a lot of the, you know, the zero trust stuff you hear, right? So never trust, always verify, right. making sure that everything is, is, is really secure. Micro segmentation is another big area. So ensuring that these applications, when they're connected to each other, they're, they're fully segmented out. And that's, again, because if someone does get a breach, if they are in your data center, you want to limit the blast radius. You want to limit the amount of damage that's done. So that by doing that, it really makes it a lot harder for them to see everything that's in there. You know, you mentioned zero trust. It used to be a buzzword, and now it's like become a mandate. And I love the moat analogy. You know, the, yeah. you build a moat, to protect the queen in the castle. The queen's left the castle, so <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's just distributed. So how should we think about this, this Pluribus and NVIDIA yeah. solution? There's a spectrum, help us understand that. You got appliances, you got you know, pure software solutions, you got what, what Pluribus is doing with NVIDIA. Help us understand that. Yeah, absolutely. I think as organizations recognize the need to distribute their services, to closer to the applications, they're trying different models. So from a legacy approach, you know, from a security perspective, they've got these centralized firewalls that they're deploying within their data centers. The hard part for that is if you want all this traffic to be secured, you're actually sending it out of the server, up through the rack, usually to a different location in the data center and back. So with the need for agility, with the need for performance, right, that adds a lot of latency. Plus, when you start needing to scale, that means adding more and more network connections, more and more appliances. So it can get very costly as well as impacting the performance. The other way that organizations are seeking to solve this problem is by taking the software itself and deploying it on the servers. Okay, so that's a, it's a great approach, right? It brings it really close to the applications. But the things you start running into there, there's a couple of things. One is that you start seeing that the DevOps team start taking on that networking and security responsibility. Which they don't want to do. They don't want to do, right? And the operations teams loses a little bit of visibility into that. Um, plus, when you load the software onto the server, you're taking up precious CPU cycles. Mm -hmm. So if you're really wanting your applications to perform at an optimized state, having additional software on there isn't going to, isn't going to do it. So you know, when we think about all those types of things, right, and certainly the, the other side effect to that is the impact on the performance, but it's also a cost. So if you have to buy more servers because your CPUs are being utilized, right, and you have hundreds or thousands of servers, right, those costs are going to add up. So what, what NVIDIA and Pluribus have done by working together is to be able to take some of those services and be able to deploy them onto a smart NIC, right? To be able to deploy the DPU-based smart NIC into the servers themselves. And then Pluribus has come in and said, we're going to unify, create that unified fabric across the networking space into those networking services all the way down to the server. So the benefits of having that are pretty clear in that you're offloading that capability from the server. So your CPUs are optimized, you're saving a lot of money. You're not having to go outside of the server and go to a different rack somewhere else in the data center. So your performance is going to be optimized as well. You're not going to incur any latency hit for every trip, round trip to the, to the firewall and back. So I think all those things are really important. Plus the fact that you're going to see from a, an organizational aspect, we talked about the DevOps and NetOps teams, the network operations teams now can work with the security teams to establish the security policies and the networking policies so that the DevOps teams don't have to worry about that. So essentially, they just create the guardrails and let the DevOps team run, because that's what they want. They want that agility and speed. You know, the point about uh, CPU cycles is key. I mean, it's estimated that 25 to 30% of CPU cycles in the data center are, are wasted. The cores are wasted doing storage offload or, yeah. or, or networking or security offload. And, 
you know, I've said many times, everybody needs a, a Nitro, like Amazon Nitro. But you can't Correct. go, you can only buy Amazon Nitro if you go into yeah, AWS, right? Correct. But everybody needs a Nitro. So is that how we should think about this? Is yeah, that's a great analogy to think about this. Um, and I think I would take it a step further because it's, it's almost the opposite end of the spectrum because Pluribus and Video are doing this in a very open way. Mm -hmm. And so Pluribus has always been a proponent of open networking. And so what they're trying to do is extend that now to these distributed services. So leverage working with NVIDIA, who's also open as well, being able to bring that to bear so that organizations can not only take advantage of these distributed services, but also that unified networking fabric, that unified cloud fabric across that environment from the server across the switches. The other key piece of what Pluribus is doing, because they've been doing this for a while now, and they've been doing it with the, the older application environments and the older server environments, they're able to provide that unified networking experience across a host of different types of servers and platforms. So you can have not only the modern application supported, but also the legacy environments, um, you know, bare metal, you could go any type of virtualization, you can run containers, et cetera. So a wide gambit of different technologies hosting those applications supported by a unified cloud fabric from Pluribus. So what does that mean for the customer? I don't have to rip and replace my, my whole infrastructure, right? Or yeah, well, well think what it does, for, again, from that operational efficiency, when you're going from a legacy environment to that modern environment, mm -hmm. it helps with the migration, helps you accelerate that migration because you're not switching different you know, management systems to accomplish that. You've mm -hmm. got the same unified networking fabric that you've been working with mm -hmm. to enable you to run your legacy as well as transfer over to those modern applications Got as it. well. Got it, so your people are comfortable with the skill sets, et cetera. All right, I'll give you the yeah. last word. Give us the, the bottom line here. So, yeah, I think obviously with all the modern applications that are coming out, the distributed application environments, it's really posing a lot of risk on these organizations to be able to get not only security, but also visibility into those environments. And so organizations have to find solutions. As I said at the beginning, they're looking to drive operational efficiency. So getting operational efficiency from a unified cloud networking solution that it goes from the server across the servers to multiple different environments, right? Different cloud environments is certainly going to help organizations drive that operational efficiency. It's going to help them save money for visibility, for security, and even open networking. So a great opportunity for organizations, especially large enterprises, cloud providers who are trying to build that hyperscaler-like environment. You mentioned the Nitro card. Right. This is a great way to do it with an open solution. Love it. Bob, thanks so much for, for coming in and sharing your insights. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for watching the program today. Remember, all these videos are available on demand at thecube.net. You can check out all the news from today at siliconangle.com and of course, pluribusnetworks.com. Many thanks to Pluribus for making this program possible and sponsoring theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching, be well, and we'll see you next time.